Hey guys, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the Wonders One. This is a really, really cool little handheld that was released around the same time as the uh, the Game Boy Pocket. I think it's one of my favourite um, handhelds that were actually ever released, so I'm, I'm really excited to do this video. Um, there's going to be a few different things um, in this video that I'm going to talk about, so I wouldn't be surprised if this video dragged out quite a lot. However, I'll try and keep it short. There's a lot of things to cover, and as I said, it's a, my favourite console, so I've got quite a lot to talk about it. So without any further ado then, let's have a look at the uh, different kinds of Wonderswan then. So I have only two different types here. Um, I have two colours of the Wonderswan colour, and I have the Wonderswan crystal. There was also a um, black and white Wonderswan that was released. I don't have one of those, but as you can imagine, it's basically just the Wonderswan um, in black and white. This is a uh, black and white game, and these two are also black and white games here. And um, unfortunately, they they don't do the cool thing like the Game Boy did, where you plugged it into a color one, um, and then it, you'd have four different colors, and you can choose um, different palettes and stuff. This is literally just black and white. Plug it in, and it'll also be black and white. Unfortunately, I only have one color game. It's Final Fantasy II, and it's um, in like complete Japanese. There's pretty much no English at all, um, so you can't play it which is quite unfortunate because I'm sure it's actually a really, really nice game. And a lot of these games that were released for the Swan, uh, one for the Wonder Swan, were RPG based and there was also quite a lot of puzzles um, and action games and the ones that are uh, like this one here, Klonoa, which I'll get onto in a bit, are really expensive because you don't need English in order to play them and, and enjoy them, really. Um, anyway, let's have a look then at the uh, the second revision, which was the, uh, the Wonder Swan colour. As I said, I've got two here. One of them is in really nice condition, and the other one doesn't work. Uh, what I'll do is I'll also get out the uh, the pink one, which is in much, much nicer condition. This is literally like, I would, I would argue it's probably mint condition. There is literally no damage on it at all. It's really, really nice condition. Um, let's have a look at this one then. In fact, there's a little bit of damage here, but I'm pretty certain I could probably wipe that off. Inside then, uh, we have the uh, the manuals and the the inserts, the leaflets. Uh, which obviously that, that one at the back there didn't have. Um, so yeah, the first thing we have here is the telephone adapter, um, which was just a peripheral you can plug in. I believe you could also browse the, the internet and send emails with it, which is nuts to think that this came out in, uh, this was like 90s technology on a tiny little handheld thing, with, which only took one AA battery, but we'll move on to that in a minute. But as you can see here, you can plug your telephone in. I believe in Japan they all had one standard size which plugged in, so uh, pretty much any phone worked with it. That's obviously the kind of operating provider, and uh, yeah, little screenshots of some games, probably Digimon up here, uh, Gunpei, which is one of the games I have. Um, not too sure what that is, uh, possibly Gundam, 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 and Wonder Classic, which is Golf, I believe. So yeah, that's the uh, one of the inserts then. Next up, we have, I believe, the warranty card. Again, none of this is English, so uh, 2002 on the back there. So I can't actually uh, read any of that on there. Still nice that it has it. And lastly, the manual, which again, can't read any of it. None of it's in English. Oh, there's a telephone number stamped from a shop on the back there or something. So uh, yeah, that's it for the manuals then. This is the console, it's in this really nice bag still. Well, I say really nice, but it's just nice because it's in the bag. Um, and then this is it here. So it's in really, really nice condition. Unfortunately, it has a problem where you can press it, the on button and it turns on, but it doesn't turn off with the uh, with the on button. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I might have to have a open it up and have a look, but don't, I don't really intend to play this. If I'm gonna play any games, I'll play it on the uh, Swan Crystal and I'll show you why very shortly. So that's it, as I said, it takes one AA battery, it, you pull up, pull down on that, and then you uh, take this out, put your battery in here, close it up again, and then you've got a lock to uh, prevent you from taking it out. So let's have a look at the console then. So um, yeah, this is pretty much it. On the side we have that port, as I said, for um, the telephone. It's also used for a couple of different things that I unfortunately do not have. Uh, the peripherals for this are really, really expensive. Um, there were certain things like um, an adapter, which basically actually allowed you to um, like write your own games and stuff. And there was loads of different things. There was like a bug, a little wireless bug that you could control the bug on here, and then it would um, go around and stuff. Loads of cool peripherals that was released for this. Um, on the side, we have, I believe, the contrast wheel. If we can uh, focus in on here to have a look. My focus is a bit slow today. So that is the contrast, which is weird because it's colour. Um, we have the a little 
uh, lanyard. We have uh, this huge cutout for where the game goes um, on this side, and that's pretty much it. On the front, we have four buttons here um, on either side for the uh, the D-pad. So we've got two D-pads. Now this is so you could play in portrait and landscape. And uh, I'll show you a game uh, which is played in portrait. Uh, it's Gunpei right here. Gunpei is the uh, the guy who actually came up with the idea for this. Uh, as I said before, when you plug this in, it doesn't have any sort of uh, colour um, added onto it. The boxes are absolutely tiny. Honestly, they are so so small. Um, really really cool little sizes, um, and they're yeah they're easily to stack and stuff. They're just quite expensive to get. Um, boxed and puzzle games are quite expensive as well obviously because this was only released in Japan so any games that are English people want um, so yeah this is it here it's basically just um, it's actually a really really unique unique game it's quite cool for some reason when I got this it came with a uh, a card from the Japanese store um, but yeah little manual here quite dinky basically the same size as the, uh, the manual from the console not that that makes any difference um, so yeah, these are the games. They come in this. They came in this really, really nice um, case here. Reason being, the contacts were exposed. So let's plug it into the back then. So you plug it in, and incidentally, this does not work unless it has a uh, a game plugged into it. No backlights, unfortunately. The sound button. You've only got four or three different types of sound. I believe you have off. And then fully on, or slightly quieter. Oh no, there's four sounds. One, two, three, four. So yeah, I guess off doesn't really count. Anyway, so we've got one player. Um, endless, we'll just go for. Really cool little game, it's quite simple. Some people don't like it, I think it's quite cool. Um, basically you have five little slots here, and these um, fall down. And then um, you basically just, swap them around and make a line basically. I think it's quite a cool, unique little game. Um, I, there was definitely nothing really like this released for the uh, the Game Boy or anything, so I think it's quite cool. Okay, so next up then, we'll have a look at uh, the Wonderswan Crystal. Now the reason why I want to move on to this one is going to be shown in just a couple of seconds when I get it out of the box. Mainly, um, this is got a far more superior screen um, and it's it's just a huge 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 improvement these unfortunately are really really expensive I picked up mine boxed complete for 50 pounds not complete actually it's missing the battery um, although they usually go for about that much alone just on the console um, but yeah the box is quite nice quite sleek um, same size as the uh, original ones um, yeah pretty much just just the same there were exclusive um, Wonder Swan Crystal games released um, I don't have any of those there's quite a lot of different ones um, actually I, I say it's complete I don't think there's manuals oh no there's manuals at the back so yeah let's have a look then put that out here I believe they're all pretty much the same shape and everything so um, in terms of the actual um, like mould for the for the plastic, it's all exactly the same, just the things that changes the screen and stuff. So yeah, we have this little uh, manual here, again, none of it's English, and then we've got the warranty information. Um, yeah, so this is it here, in comparison then to this pink one, I believe it's actually exactly the same. Oh wait, no, there are some differences at the top here, never had them outside my side I don't think. Speaker's a bit different, um, buttons are a bit different, <laughs> actually everything is quite different, I take my statement back. Um, yeah, that's it there. It's not, not hugely different, not massively smaller or anything, but as I said before, the screen is so much more superior. This one kind of looks a bit like the Sega Nomad screen, if you've ever seen one of those, where it's kind of like fading and stuff, whereas this one's a proper nice clear screen. So let's have a look then at some games. So we take it out the exact same way, um, and we take the battery out of this one. Uh, it's quite hard to do. There we go then, so whack that in here, and pop that in the back, and let's get a game. So we've had a look at Gunpei then. Uh, this game that I have here, the um, 
metacommunication therapy. I showed this in one of my unboxing videos. It was actually one of my more recent ones. If you want to have a look at this, go and check it out. It's got great music, um, although I can't understand a bloody thing of it because it's completely Japanese and it's like a talking game. There's not there's not actually any sort of um, like platforming or anything. It's literally like a talking game. Um, yeah, so this is Final Fantasy. Incredible manual, some really, really nice artwork in here. Um, again, I can't actually read any of it. I can read the names. Um, we can have a quick look then at the colour game because this is, as I said, the only one I have. For the colour ones, similar to the Game Boy, they went for this three see-through um, case as opposed to the uh, the ones on the, the other one, which is kind of like a translucent black. Uh, this one's actually like clear. So we plug it in exactly the same, turn it on, and the game's not been read properly. Is that better? Nope. Give it the old blow, that's always a good idea. There we go. So as you can see, instantly far, far more superior screen. Looks absolutely great. We've got an extra sound option as well. Um, so let's have a look then. Again, I, I'm not going to be able to understand any of this because it's all in, uh, in Japanese or whatever. Picking up the reflection of the camera. Oh god, I keep walking in and out of this castle. So yeah, colour games look really, really nice, really vibrant, look absolutely great in my opinion. So yeah, colour games look great, although I can't actually understand anything that's going on, I'm just walking around. So let's have a look then at a game that's actually a viable game for you to play if you buy this console. This is Klonoa. Now this was quite an expensive game, possibly my most expensive out of all the ones I own. Um, as I said before, it's um, because it's a puzzle game that's in it doesn't really require much English for you to learn or to, to play even. Um, and I believe there's probably also transcripts as well on online which you can go and find. This one is in really nice condition. Again, adding to the price. It's unfortunately I don't have the box, but that makes it even more expensive. I paid about £25 for this from Japan um, and they've really really gone up in price although it's an absolutely fantastic game it was released on the PlayStation, the Wii and the Game Boy Advance I believe as well so let's have a quick look then great music, really really nice console, um, game even uh, nice console as well but yeah, little platformer game you're this little kind of bird type creature you've got this little ball that fires out you jump, you can fly for a brief amount of time and what's great is you use your enemies to project yourself up things. So if we have a look, I believe whoever played this before me, whoever owned this has already gone quite far. Um, I'm not actually entirely sure how to do this level. There you go, oh crap. It's a really, really nice little game. I've, I've kind of... Uh... There we go. Yeah, it's a really, really cool little game. Like, if I, I don't want to spoil it for you if you want to actually um, play it yourself, but it's, it is a really cool little game. I, I think it's um, one of the best games that was actually ever released for this console. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it then for the uh, for the Wonders one. It's I kind of just wanted to briefly touch upon it because it's it's a great console that I own. It was a competitor of the Game Boy. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing really humorous about this to take the mick out of. Um, obviously, we've got things coming up like the Game Child and the Supervision and some of the stupid translations that came up. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of this console, it's it's a brilliant, brilliant console. Definitely wish it was released in the UK. I would have loved to have seen some PAL RPGs for this thing. And I also wish they went for um, one step further and actually released the backlight. Um, due to the fact, though, that this was only released in Japan, it did super, super well. I think possibly when um, Bandai saw the numbers of the... Um, of, of the, the sold um, Neo Geo stuff, like the Neo Geo Pocket and everything, they decided not to release it in the UK. Um, just like this, the Neo Geo did insanely well in Japan. However, in Europe and America, it flopped and only sold very, very limited quantities. I believe under 100,000, but I might be wrong. Anyway, that's it then for this video. We're going to be touching on the uh, Neo Geo at another time. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed. It's quite a long video. Hopefully you got to the end. If you got to the end, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I hope you have a great, great day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.